Welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's preview, it is All Blacks versus England this weekend, the start of the Scott Robertson era, and an opportunity for Steve Borthwick to really have a go at an All Blacks side, which we're not really sure what to expect, are we? It's an England side which are starting to improve, um, but still have not quite uh, clicked just yet. And they play against a, an All Blacks side who, as I mentioned, have not played under Scott Robertson just yet. So we're not entirely sure what to expect of them. And uh, as a result, you know, there could be a bit of a sloppiness. There could be a little bit of uh, disjunction, maybe not quite being sort of the finished product. And if there are some cracks in the defense, cracks in the system, could this English side potentially go and exploit them and uh, pull out what would be an incredible uh, victory over in New Zealand, which is, as we know, one of the hardest places to go and, and get a victory. So uh, it's going to be a very exciting um, get weekend of rugby, really. And not just this game. We've obviously got Wales versus Australia. We've got uh, the box taking on uh, Ireland, um, Argentina versus France. Lots of very cool matches to, to, to sort of take place. But we're going to focus on this, uh, the All Blacks versus England. And we're going to look at the two teams in just a moment. Before we do, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. A little bit of background. Um, first of all, the game will take place in Dunedin at the Forsyth Bar Stadium. Uh, the last time these two teams played, it was a 25-all draw back in 2022. Before that was the historic 1917 lost by, they have, um, by New Zealand against England in the World Cup semi-final. Um, before that, just a one-point win from New Zealand uh, over England in 2018. A three-point win back in 2014. Um, so if you look at the last four games, all been very, very tight. New Zealand have won two, England have won one, and there's been one draw. So recent history would suggest that this game could yet be pretty um, competitive. However, um, in New Zealand, things are, are quite different. Uh, so if you look at what Steve Borthwick had to say, he said uh, the players have been absolutely excellent in the, the series so far and um, continue to be. Training was a very, very high level, and I think the players are enjoying being here in New Zealand and they've enjoyed their experience so far. We've got exciting players coming throughout our squad, and I'm looking forward to seeing them go on Saturday. We know it's an incredibly ch um, incredible challenge playing against this New Zealand team. They have such quality players. There's probably no bigger challenge in rugby than playing New Zealand in New Zealand. We can't wait for Saturday. I think the players are very exciting. Um, if you look at, for example, home form for New Zealand, they have won each of their last four test matches on a home soil, scoring four plus try in three of those games. However, the All Blacks have lost each uh, of their last two home games against European sides. Ireland 2022 um, was the, obviously the last time they hosted someone. So maybe an opportunity for England to try and uh, and replicate that incredible Ireland series win. Let's look at the teams, shall we? And we're going to start with the home side, which is New Zealand. And uh, Scott Barrett starts his uh, uh, sort of tenure as All Blacks captain. So let's go through it, shall we? Ethan DeGroote, Cody Taylor, Tyrell Lomax, the front row. And I think that'll probably be a dominant front row against the England front row, which has a lot of experience. Um, you know, in Joe Marler, Will Stewart, um, Jamie George. But I do think that this All Black pack has come a long way. And I think the front row can give them problems. Uh, Scott Barrett, Patrick Tupolato will be packing them up. And then exciting, uh, maybe not as experienced as what we've seen from previous sort of back rows. But uh, Sam Penny for now, um, Dalton Papali and Ardi Sevilla in that back row. I know Sam Kane's currently injured. No Hostel Satutu, who was left out very controversially. Um, so that is the back row. TJ Perinari back in an All Blacks shirt and uh, expect him to be as good as always. So experienced. And he's partnering the exciting Damian McKenzie, who has been backed in the number 10 jumper. The back three is Boxer Sebi Reese back in it, as well as Steven uh, Perafita, who generally operates at 10, but is playing at 15 this weekend. Jordy Barrett at 12. Rico Awani at 13. Off the bench, it is Asafo Amua, Hoffa Tonga Fasi, Fletcher Newell, the youngster, Tupo Vai, Luke Jacobson, and a standard 5 3 split, which features Finley Christie, Antonina Brown, and Bowden Barrett as the backline replacements. Bowden Barrett continues to notch up caps against 124th um, cap this weekend. And let's have a look at the English side, shall we? Which is looking something like this. I'm not going to mention uh, who the vice captains are because there are four of them. And I refuse. I think it's the dumbest thing in the world. And the fact that they have to give a name four different vice captains, I don't know. I don't know if this is like, a, a, is, is there is there an issue in the camp? You know, is this something to try and boost the egos of these players? 
Very, very weird. But they will be captained by Jamie George. He's, as mentioned, joined by Joe Marler and Will Stewart in that front row. A second row features uh, Mario Toja next to George Martin, who's very much sort of locked down that number five jersey. Chandler Cunningham himself starts number six next to Sam Underhill and Ben Earl. It's a good loose shirt. It's a good pack um, from England. Whether they'll be able to contend with his impact, I'm very interested to see. Uh, if we then look at the back line, Alex Mitchell will partner Marcus Smith, a back three of Tommy Freeman and the exciting young Emmanuel Fayou Wabosa uh, jo uh, joins George Furbank, who I was very impressed with during the uh, Six Nations. Henry Slade will partner Ollie Lawrence. They've had quite a bit recently. I do think that the centres are maybe an area where England have struggled recently. I think this could be an area which New Zealand could continue to exploit. And then if we look at the bench, Theo Dan, uh, who basically gets no minutes. I don't think he played a single minute in the World Cup. Um, Finn Baxter, Dan Cole, Alex Coles, Tom Curry, Ben Spencer, Finn Smith, and Oli um, Lato. It's a decent bench. Uh, you know, Ben Spencer is an exciting player. Finn Smith is a very exciting player. You've got the experience of Tom Curry, for example, Dan Cole bringing plenty of experience uh, as well. So it's a bit of a mixture off the bench. Um, you know, looking at the two teams, I think England are a much better side than they were, obviously, a year ago. Um, and, and But I do think this New Zealand side this New Zealand side when it eventually shows up is got too much has got too much um, so my sort of prediction is probably New Zealand by about 10 to 15 I think obviously being the first game of the season might be a little bit of rustiness also play first game under Razor things could take a while to get going the other alternative they could hit the ground running and uh, look really really good so uh, what are your predictions let me know down in the comments below smash a like on the video subscribe to the channel as well thank you very much for watching my name is Steve and I'll chat to you soon